Hello and welcome back to the Malden High Broadcast Network. My name is Andrew Baxley. I'm alongside Marcos Perez, Kevin De Silva, Landon Myers, Brendan Bress, and Ben Coggins for episode 5 of Garage Talks. On today's episode, we've got uh, updates on Malden recruiting, got a Malden versus Wade Hampton preview, uh, we got our college football trivia, we'll, we'll talk about the return of the Premier League, the English Premier League, and then we've got top 10 uh, best uniforms in college football because there's 10 weeks until the hopeful return of college football. Uh, we'll go ahead and start it off. Three updates, three recruiting updates. Jaden Lucas, uh, 2021 defensive back for football, offered by Florida State. Oh, we got three. What did I say? Oh, yes, my bad, 2022. And then we got uh, Bennett Sloper, a pitcher and second baseman for the baseball team. He committed to Lander University. And then Caroline Sims of Girls Lacrosse, offered by William Penn. Uh, as you know, uh, fall sports, they began their workouts on Monday. They had a Monday through Thursday. They'll resume again Monday, I believe. And then, uh, update for us, our last day to order merch is Sunday. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media, on Twitter, at MHBN 2020, 2020, and then on Instagram, at MHBN underscore 2020, so you can see our merch and order it. So now we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, we'll preview Malden versus Wade Hampton, which is week four of the high school football season for the Malden Mavericks, head coached by Sarah Neesmith in his first season. They were 6-6 six and six last year, finished fourth in the region, made it to round two of the 5A state playoffs. They play York week one, Spartanburg week two, and then Greenville week three. Uh, you, know, you know our key players, George Ford, Jameson Tucker, Randy Caldwell, Jaden Lucas, of course, Jane Lucas, as I said, got one more offer this week from Florida State. But then switch over to the Wade Hampton Generals. Their head coach is Mark Klatt. They were 0-10 last year, finished dead last in their region. And, they, and the year before, they only won one game. So they're 1-20 they're over two seasons. They play easily week one, Greenville week two, and their rival Eastside week three. The last time these two teams played was in 2017 in which Malden won 30-24 to in that one. A uh, couple key players for them. Isaiah Smith is their best player. He's a rising senior defensive tackle. He is a, he's trademarked as a, as a run stopper. That's what he does. And then their, their quarterback, Hayden Wyatt, had 13 touchdowns but 18 interceptions last year. He's also a rising senior. And then one more rising senior, Marshall Wyndham, is a wide receiver. So those three players to keep you an eye on. Uh, now we'll turn it over to the guys. We'll see what they think about this game. We'll start off with, with Ben. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Wade Hampton, not really the most talented of teams. Really down.
We're just turning our entire conversation. Uh, uh, I need more to right now. That's all we do. Well, there's something, but that's well, not what it usually yeah. is. <laughs> Hello? But can you hear it clearly? That's awkward. <laughs> How clearly can you hear me? Or does it sound like I'm in a fish tank? I'm still it, it's it's a bit of a delay right now. Still Well that's a little bit awkward, so we'll we'll just keep going from here. Uh everyone uh, everyone said the same exact thing. It's should be easy mall to win. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of the younger players and uh, the backup, what we think will be the backup quarterback, David Shearer. We'll see him out there a little bit. But it'll be a good day for some rotation. Uh, we'll get some guys healthy if there are any injuries. But, yeah, it should be an easy win. Uh, one more thing that I'll go over in terms of high school football before we switch over to college is uh, the evening sports page, if you know what that is. Uh, it's just a, a newspaper that goes over high school football in particular. But they came out with their – all upstate preseason Three teams. Off and if the guys have any any uh, players they think they sh that should be in there or players they don't think should be in there, we'll just let them go over that. Any big question marks? So I'll read it off. Here's the first team offense: Marshall Skoloff from East Side and Andre Lindsay from Gaffney are the two quarterbacks. Two running backs are Zaire Scotland from Walhalla and J.J. Hudson from T.O. Hanna. Three wide receivers: Jalal Dean from Palmetto, Josiah Benson from Daniel. And Miller D. Armand from Greer. On on the offensive line, they got Jaden Collins from Greer, Davis Sutherland from Abbeville, Sam Judy from Eastside, Sean Perkins from Travelers Rest, and Jaden Ramsey from Westside. Uh, their three athletes are Chance Black from Dorman, George Ford from Malden, and Andre Goodman from Greenville. And on the special team side of the ball, Will Fowler, the kicker slash punter from Swartenberg, and then Omar Khan, also kicker punter from Dorman, and Alex Dayton the long snapper from east side. And then their sleepers on offense is Jameson Tucker from Malden, Malachi Hunter from Walhalla, and Aziz Hoof from Greenville. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, first team still, Tyron Ingrams Dawkins, who's one of the biggest, one of the most sought after recruits uh, on the market right now from Gaffney. They got the Aries and A.C. Scott, the two Scott twins from Hillcrest. They got Jidus Greer from Belton Honia Path, Miles Scott from Eastside, Reed Morrissey from Eastside, Camden Gray from Chapman, Jeremiah Foster from Blacksburg, Jamal Crawford from Easley, K.J. Makins from Greenwood, Cruz Temple from Abbeville, Caden Sullivan from Bowling Springs, Jamin Loris from Eastside, Cam Henderson from T.R., and Dre Pickney from Boeing Springs. And then they got three sort of hybrid defensive players. Ricks Falkenberry from Greenville, Paris Ferguson from Spartanburg, and Shaheem Scotland from Wren. And then their three sleepers, another one here from Malden, Drayton Brown at cornerback. And then they got Briggs Cox from Wren and Terrence Gist from Greenville. And then switch over to the second team. Back on offense, Seth Smith from Spartanburg and Braden Blackman from Burns. They're two quarterbacks. They're two running backs. They're Preston Lowndes from Greenville and Tyrell Haddon from Abbeville. Uh, three wide receivers. They got Hayden Willimon from Wren, Amari Coates from Greenwood, Natron Johnson from Gaffney. And then they got four offensive linemen, Jackson Robinson, Jonathan Phelps, Bryson Peppers, and Cale Brown. And their three athletes are Jerquavis Meadors from Burns, Jalen Tolbert from Greenwood, and Charles McFadden from Boiling Springs. And then on defense, Ethan Reynolds, Ryan Witt, Demorian Lyles, and Zach Svitsky up front. Three linebackers, C.J. Lipscomb, A.J. Sloan, and Howie Thomas. Uh, four defensive backs, D. Rice Williams, Khalil Wright, Jalen Williams, and Christian Santana. And then on special teams, they got Bryce Early and Nick Mantecas. So we'll switch back over to the guys. You got any thoughts on those? Anyone you think should be in there that's not in there or anyone in there that should not be in there? My man Kevin De Silva for Long Snapper. 
Kevin, your thoughts on that, on being snubbed? You know, um... I mean, I don't really know the dude from Eastside. I think he's pretty. He's like a four point five star, so he's not obviously not like. I mean, he's not like terrible, so I can't hate on him. He's good, but, but at least a second team would have been nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, was was there even? A sec- I looked on. I thought I didn't see there. There was there was a second team. Yeah, I know. So, but there wasn't even a second team. You know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I'll, I'll get over it. Um, just just more motivation to go out there and snap the heck out of a ball. <laughs> True. Uh, I I was a little bit uh caught off guard when I saw Drayton Brown on there. I mean, we know we know he's a a a good um defensive back, and he filled in for Andrew Phillips pretty well at the end of last season. But first team, I, I or wait, was he first team? Oh, he was he was, he was first team yeah, yeah. sleeper. So I mean, we'll count him as first team. I, I think I'm obviously not saying he doesn't deserve that. He does. I'm just surprised to see other people recognizing, and, and it's a good thing. It's a good yeah, surprise. Yeah. But I, I'm surprised to see other people recognizing just how good of a player he is. And with with the limited play time that he had last year, and then the other two Malden players, Jameson Tucker also a sleeper. I thought he he might yeah. should have just been straight into the first team. I don't really but think you can. Uh, for, he was for basketball. No, he was all region for football. Yeah. Which was the toughest region in the state, so. But but all, but the region team is selected by the coaches. This is selected by media who is not around you every day. But the coaches also would be more biased, and they also have more selections. It your your selections for the all region teams based on where you finish. So Malden had what did we have six? I think we had six. I don't know how that works. So it was <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Deuce. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Jaden, yeah. George, Jayden, George, Jordan, yeah, yeah. Jameson, yeah, yeah. six, I think it was. It's just, it's just, it's just based on what you finish, and it's it's picked by the coaches, but this one's picked by the media, so you have to pick more than just the 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 five A people. But if that's all we got, we'll switch over to trivia now. College football trivia here. Uh. Uh-huh. Well, we'll give Marcos his soccer questions, but he's going to be... We'll let Marcos and Ben do, do too. How fun. How fun. All right. Can we choose, like, can we hear the college nope. question first? And nope. Then like, okay, that's fair. All right, it's going to... You're going to have three options right here, all right? All right. Is it Thomas Muller, Ooh. Manuel Neuer, or Joshua Kimmich? I joined Bayern when I was 10 years old. This is the only club I ever played for, and I've made 300 appearances for the club. Is it Thomas Muller, Manuel Neuer, or Josh Kimmich? It's definitely not Neuer because he played for Shockley. Okay. But it's I want to say Thomas Muller. All right, Ben. I got Thomas Muller. It could be Kimmich though. No, it's it's Muller. Uh, so that's a one for one for you guys. Uh, let me pick which which second one I'll do. Because Neuer did play for Shockley, right? Yes. Who's the most overrated midfielder? Because I know that one. No. Liverpool. <laughs> Tension. All right, I got is one. Insane I got right one. <coughs> your, your answer choices here are Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood, oh, and okay. Paul Pogba. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay, first clue. At the age of seven, I joined the Manchester United Youth Academy. Second clue. I made my debut for the first team on the 21st of November. Of this year? I won't, I won't say the year okay. because that will, that will give it away. And then final clue. Juan Mata called me, in quotation marks, Wonder Kid. Is it Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood, or Paul Pogba? I'm going to go Mason Greenwood. What was the other option between Mason Greenwood and Paul Pogba? What's the other one? Marcus Rashford. I'm going to go for Rashford. It's Rashford. That's why I didn't say the year because 20 fi- he made his debut in 2015 against yeah, against Midgitland in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah, I I was thinking Juan Mata would be like more of a father figure right now than he would be. He definitely is a father figure right now. Just but look at like him. more of him. Yeah, so that's why I was thinking Mason Greenwood. All right. You guys talk about something random while I get my paper for the trivia. Oh. 
Well. Uh, let's talk about the kicker situation at Malden. Okay, Very heated debate. Oh, Kyle? No. He's talking a lot of crap. Ooh, is he actually? Yeah. Is he actually? What is he saying? I'm thinking he's going to get it. You think he's going to get it? According to his confidence. What does he say? What is he saying? But I did see on Kevin's snap the other day that he was kicking field goals. I'm just saying. It's a possibility. There's Joshua Cheek. The uh, Snaps it to himself. Kicks the field goal. <laughs> Is Cameron practicing any field goals? Cameron's practicing field goal. So right now, what we have, what we have now is we have for field goals. I would love to do field goals, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, yeah. Well, there, we have there's a JV, JV long Stanford, but he's all. Uh, but um, right now we it's between Kyle Shields, Eddie Flannery. Who's oh Eddie. We, we Eddie. I want Eddie to win now. I got I do want Eddie, either yeah, Eddie or Cameron, and but there's also this Cameron freshman. Punts I think he's no, 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 no. Is he a freshman or a sophomore? He's a, he's a rising sophomore. Eddie's a rising sophomore. No, I'm talking about uh, Hayne, Nolan Hainis' brother. Oh, he's a rising sophomore. Too. Okay, yeah. So he, I've heard he's he's nice too. So that could be something. So. Or maybe we can bring Andrew out of retirement. No, I'm not. Sure. We could. <laughs> we could. <laughs> What is Kyle saying? What is he saying? Just curious. I think he's all, I think he's just confident in himself. No, but has he been saying stuff? Like, come on, you gotta spill the beans. I'm now. not. I'm not gonna say anything. Bro, come on now. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> I need to know what Kyle is saying. No comment. We'll just leave it at that right there. I don't think. If Andrew gets offered a roster spot in Malden Varsity. For football, he is leaving the broadcast. <laughs> he is leaving the broadcast. No, no, we'll just, no, we'll just, we'll just mic me up on the sideline. I'll, I'll still broadcast on the sideline. <laughs> no, I'll still do play by play. That was exciting. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just be like how we were at T.O. Hannah when I, when I had to step he's away. He's just gonna and, say, and something he's just gonna below. say, guys, there's somebody who's looking really mad at me. He's going. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die for a sec. I thought I was gonna die. Hey guys, hey guys, watch this number forty-five on the <laughs> side. He's gonna he's gonna be charged and trying to block the punt. <laughs> Yo guys, that man is fast. I do, I do have one tackle in my career though, so. But also zero missed tackles, so I'm one for one. That's pretty impressive. I have a video of it. I would like to see that. I would like to see that when I'm dead. So now, as we this trivia is taking us a long time today because we are a little bit unprepared. We were watching the Manchester game, and that took a, a bit of our attention. Yes, of course. I'm I'm not gonna get too much into it, but. I like I'm like the Skip Bayless of soccer sometimes, <clears throat> because I just say things to, so say things to say things. Obviously, Pogba is a, a world class talent, but I just like, I just like flattering a couple things. I just, I just like to fire things up a little, say a couple things. Something Skip Bayless is known to do, but I cannot stand any. I cannot stand stand Skip or. Shannon. Yeah, they're they're insane. God, they're so annoying on him. I like Pat McAfee. He the things he's doing. Pat McAfee. Kevin that's, definitely loves Pat McAfee. He's so funny. I could I could hear him. I hear at least five of his videos a day. All right, I'm ready now. We'll, we'll get into our <laughs> college football <coughs> trivia right now. Just as a heads up, I got three of five. So that's pretty good. Is that a D? I got a D. Three divided 60%. by five. Barely a D. That's a 60. <laughs> what is a D? All right, number one. Marcos. We're going to go Marcos, Landon, Brendan, Kevin, and then Ben. All right, first question. By the way, all these are, are multiple choice. That might help you a little bit. All right. What are you doing? Nothing. Go ahead. First question. Which school was the first ever number one in the college football playoff rankings? Was it Alabama, TCU, Mississippi State, or Auburn? 
Marcos. Do you need Alabama. Me to read the again? Alabama. 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 The very. The, the very first, first one. First ever number one in the college football so rankings. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Mississippi State. All right, Brendan. Um. Okay. Which school? Yeah. Wait, it was Auburn, Bama. And Auburn, Duke. TCU, Mississippi State, and Alabama. I'm going to go with TCU. All right, Kevin. I'm going to go Auburn. And Ben? Pretty sure it was Mississippi State. It was Mississippi State. So, correct answer for Landon and for Ben. Yeah, Dak. True. They lost like three games that season. He really is. He's inspir- He's inspirational, guys. <laughs> Full soccer just so Landon can not get any right. <laughs> Watch him still get some right. Still get. He'll just guess C every time and still get it right. <laughs> All right, next question. What was the final score of the first college football playoff title game? All right. Was you, it? You have no idea how tough that is. <laughs> for, if you say that's a tough one for you, <laughs> I'll just pick C. No. <laughs> I didn't even read off the answer choices. <laughs> All right, answer choice A: Ohio State thirty-five, Oregon twenty. B: Oregon forty-two, Ohio State twenty-one. C: Ohio State fifty-two, Oregon thirty-five. And D: Ohio State forty-two. Oregon 20. B. You got B? Two Bs. A. A. What's, what, what are the choices again? Ohio State 35, Oregon 20. That's A. Answer choice B is Oregon 42, Ohio State 21. Answer C is Ohio State 52, Oregon 35. And D is Ohio State 42, Oregon 20. I'm going to go D. D? I'm going A. A? It is D. So Kevin got right. I, I, I guessed it right when I when I did it right myself. So we got three people with one right now. Soccer doesn't matter. We're just doing that so you didn't seem so uh, lower educated. Yeah. Uh, third question. This one only has three answer choices, though. Okay. Which title game was the closest in college football playoff history? Was it <clears throat> 2015, 2018, or 2017? You guys want me to read off the teams, or you just want to go with yes. that? No, no just one. just the year? Which title game was the closest in college football playoff history? 2015, 2017, or 2018? 2017. All right. Landon? 2017. 2017. All right. Brendan? Uh, 2017. All right. Kevin? Read the answer choices again. <laughs> uh, 2015, 2017, or 2018? 2017. All right. Is this, is this the year the game was held or the actual season? Oh, no. Held. I'm pretty sure it's the year it was held. And then it's 17. Uh, the answer is actually 2018. That was the, the Alabama-Georgia one where it went to overtime. and. Oh. I forgot about that. I also I got I that thinking, one right. Let's go. I I was thinking of the uh, the the, the one pumps in one. I know that that one almost threw me off as well on the Hunter Renf- Was that the Hunter Renfro catch? That was very close. Mm, I don't think so. That was it. That was a good. That was a really tricky one though. Uh, fourth question. Uh, which college football playoff seed? So when they when they the rankings when they go into the playoff, which one of those has the most championships? One, two, three, or four, obviously. Okay. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with my lucky number. Actually it, I think it, it can't be one. Well it can be, that's one of the It can be one though. I'm gonna go three. Three. 
Two. Two. Four. No way. It was two. It, it is two. Uh, what? Yeah, Ohio. Yeah, but there's been three twos. Wait, Brendan, did you say two as well? Yeah, he did. All right. So, Landon has two, Ben has two, Kevin has one, Brendan has one, and I have three. But just heads up, I got this in, this last one incorrect. So, there could be a tie right here. How many times has the preseason AP number one uh, team won the college football national championship? One, two, three, or four? The preseason AP number one, how many times has that team won the college football national championship? Three. One, two, three, or four? Three? One. One. Go to Ben, I'm thinking. <laughs> I honestly can't think of one example, so I'm just going to go with one. All right. This is just playoff era, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go one. 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 The correct answer is one. It didn't say who it was, but we'll, we'll get someone to Google it. Alabama in Alabama. the 2015 game. All right. That, that makes sense. They were number two going into that game, but they were they were number one out of the preseason poll. Yeah. They also Ole Miss in the middle of the season. We were one, but then we lost. Or we were number one. In, oh, the year we won, we were two. We stayed two the entire season. Except for this year. All right, so what do we have, a three-way tie? How are we going to settle it this time? Oh, can I ask a question about the NFL? No. Nope. This is college football. Right. College football. <laughs> yeah. It's Landon. It's it's me, Landon, and Ben. So I won't, I won't come up with this one. Yeah, I'll just see who can get the closest. What is yours, and we'll see what it is before we answer it. What college had the most draft picks in draft picks last year? Not a no, bad question. To, we're trying to do something that's like. Is that like, related to the college playoff? Ohio State. I was gonna say Ohio. Alabama. Alabama. You actually know. We, we won't actually do this one, but I'll. But for the fun of it, what is it? I, I well, well, I got Ohio State. Linda, who you got? I think it's Ohio State. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna take Alabama. All right. I don't know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Ohio State. So, I'm what was the point of this? Let's look it up. Look it up. Well, look it up right we now. You a ch <laughs> why, would you ask, why would you ask the question if you don't know the answer? This is why we had. That's the whole point of this. I'm going to look it up. I think it's Ohio. I, no, actually, no, wait. I think it's. Oh, no, wait. I think I do know. Florida. Florida? Yeah. Florida Gators. Yeah. All right. Since 2000. The year 2000, which school has had the most first-round picks? You want answer, answer oh, choices? Notre Dame. No, 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 don't. Wait, well, that wasn't my answer. That was not my answer. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, you have Texas, Georgia, USC, or Florida State. Since 2000. USC, California. Yeah. And then what was the last one? Florida State. Yeah. yeah. Texas. Shit, what did I say? Um, <laughs> Tech, We're going to have to add the Texas, E on this. <laughs> Texas, Florida, USC, Florida State. Wait, wait. Well, the answer I was going to say, he had it in the first time, but he took it out. So Yeah, I don't remember. Jo he, I was going to say Georgia. I'm looking at a list of like six, and I, I just picked random teams. So, <laughs> so since 2000, yes. Texas. I'm going for Florida State. Texas, Florida, USC, Florida State. Oh, Florida's in there? Yeah. I was gonna say Florida too because they had like they had a bunch that when the year after they won they were yeah. well I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Florida 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 State and you got Texas who is uh, it the answer is Florida State with 24 wow Ben Ben two is that Florida had two 19. in a row for Ben. 
I'm going with the PS4. <laughs> well, good thing it's good thing it's not your choice. Only one person has actually done it, so you you can't complain. All right, now we'll we'll do our uh we'll do college football uniforms. All right. Marcos, you want to start? We're gonna go. Should we go? Sh we should go ten. Everyone do your ten. Everyone do your nine. You can start with your honorable mention if you want. Okay, honorable mention. Iowa. Oh, okay, honorable mention for everyone that has one. Then we'll go ten. Then we'll go. I have to go with Iowa. Because obviously, as everyone knows, I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and Iowa copied their exact uniforms off of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So. Okay. I'm definitely gonna have to say Iowa. Uh, my honorable mention. My honorable mention is Oregon. I don't really like the way most of Oregon's uniforms look, but just the variety they have, you've got to throw them in somewhere. So I'm making it. Oregon my honorable mention is one rule that we that we have is it, it can't you can't put your favorite team in there. But I didn't say we couldn't put your favorite team in the honorable mentions. So I got I got North Carolina in the honorable mentions. I think everyone else. Well, everyone else should have them in the top ten. I know I did, <clears throat> but I did. definitely honorable mention. Uh, my opinion, best jerseys, but that's why we're we have the the unbiased right here. Kevin, what's your honorable mention? Uh, so I had two honorable mentions. My phone's dead. My phone's dead, so I kind of forgot the second one. But I know the first one, definitely underrated, is the all of Montana's uniform, all of Montana State's. Uniforms, the blue, the navy blue with the white helmet and the white bottoms just go hard. But they when they do the the blue tops with the yellow bottoms, it just looks ugly. And especially, this is different when they do the white helmets, yellow jerseys, and then the white bottoms undefeated. And then I had a second one, but I forgot. All right, we'll come back to that to that one then. So I'll start. Uh, uh my in tenth place for me. Who do I have? Let's find it. I had Oklahoma State, uh, the orange uh, with the white helmet and the white bottoms. Uh, Marcos, who's your 10? I had the iconic Ohio State there. You know, I love their helmets. I love their jerseys. I love the gray. And it's it could honestly be an NFL jersey. That's how good it is. In 10th, I got the James Madison, just the simple purple ones. They're simple, but I like them. So. For 10, I have UCF's gray top and bottom with the silver helmet. Uh, for 10, I've got Ohio State, but not the classic Ohio State. I've got their all black, black top, black shirt, black bottoms. Kevin, do you know who your number 10 is? I know my number 10 is. My number 10, stick with it, the... Um, not big D1 schools. It's gonna go gonna be the Furman Paladins, what? the white helmet with the purple face mask, and then the purple jersey with the white bottoms. So clean, so clean. I'm representing Greenville out here. Uh, I should just hold my list open. Uh, now over to number nine, I had Boise State, but not the not the classic Boise State. I had the the gray with blue pants and blue helmet. If you know what that is, yeah, yeah. I that's who I had at, at number nine. I had Boise State as well, but I had their all blues because the all blues in the all blue turf just I just find that to be insane. I just, I get lost. Uh, yeah, but that's a per. <laughs> imagine playing against a defense like that. It's a defense like that. At nine, I got the UCLA gold helmet, blue, blue, j blue shirt, and then gold pants. I like them. They're different. They're different. I still like them, though. For nine, I have Washington's gold helmet, purple jersey, gold pants. For nine, I have Boise State with the orange helmet, orange top, and orange pants. Boise State, uh, a little popular on the, the number nine seed. <laughs> So my phone's dead. I can't remember, but I rem I remember my second honorable mention. It was the Duke all gray with like oh, the, no. <laughs> the Duke oh, gray no. with oh, the devil Andrew. logo. It oh, just goes no. so hard. But I think my number nine. I can't say that. 
I think my number nine yeah, was the nine. Texas home with the white helmets and then the, the burnt orange and then the black cleats with the black socks. People are hating on that, but I think it's low-key clean. <laughs> Kevin, better, Kevin better hope he's not here for basketball or else he's going to – I'm about to turn up on him for saying that he likes Duke's jerseys. But we'll move over to number eight now. I got the, the LSU purple and white, the purple jerseys, white pants. And then they got the white helmet as well. Uh, Marcus? I got the West Virginia all yellows. Those those are sexy in my opinion. They could be – I would – I wanted to put them top five, but then there's there's some better choices up there. At eight, I got the alt, the camo for Army, the full camo that makes it look like a military uniform because everything, if you put anything military uniform, it just always adds something for me. So I, I love it. It's just all, all military color. It just represents our military, which I love. My eight has to be Oregon. I mean, every jersey from them is good, yeah, which one? but like, just as a whole, like all of them, none of them are like crazy enough to be above, but all of them together, I feel like, make the top ten. Yeah, and my number eight, it's Oklahoma State with their all black uniforms. I, I mean, I don't know what it is, but those blackout uniforms, I always kind of get. I, 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 uh, Oklahoma State with their all black uniforms, I don't know what it is, but... Those if, are nice. if people pull those off, they just look so clean to me. Uh, you can to me they're either really good like Oklahoma State and Ohio State, or they're just they're just terrible. terrible. So. All right, my phone's about to pop back up. Um, needs to hurry up. Needs to hurry up. Okay, checking my notes. All right, my now I'm on number eight, right? Or number nine? Number eight. eight. All right. Number eight, Penn State all white. Too clean, especially when they do the all white with the, like everyone's in all white. It's so hot. So that's that's number eight. Definitely underrated. Best college football atmosphere and, and the, in the nation is, uh, is Penn State's white out. Yeah, I agree. Uh, number seven now, I got the, the Georgia, the black jerseys, gray pants, and red helmets. For my number seven, I have Florida State with their aero helmets and then the red jerseys. I just think those are really clean and they just complement really well with those gold numbers. Seven, I got the USC, the red, red helmets, red tops, and then the yellow bottoms. Again, simple, but I still like them. They're different. Here I've got Boise State's all blue. I feel like it's just so clean with their field. Like, it, blending in, it's, it's camo. But my number seven, it's Arizona State. These all whites with the little uh, black, I don't know what you call that, the little trident or whatever. I don't know what you call that little thing on their helmet, but definitely the Arizona State all whites with the maroon trim. They look very nice to me. Or for my number seven, we have the Colorado State. When they do the flag uniforms, like they dress up like their flag, like it's pretty hard. Oh, yeah, those are good. Cool. It's pretty sick. They're very different. I wish other teams did that, but um, they don't. It's kind of sad, but these, the Colorado State ones are kind of nice. Uh, for six, I got the, the Navy, uh, the, the Navy blue jerseys, uh, with the white, gold, and blue helmet with, uh, the anchor on there. Uh, I don't know when they wore it, but they're in the snow right here, so. In this picture, so that's what I got for for number six, Marcos. I got Notre Dame. I love their helmets. They're all gold helmets. Those are nice. Yeah, the shamrocks are really nice too. Six. I got the Washington gold gold helmet, purple top, gold pants. I I don't know what I like about gold, but I like a lot of things about gold, and it goes good. What? No, because there's just two shot. There's it's just bright. These ain't these ain't bright. I'm like Notre Dame's is close to real gold, and then it goes the gold goes well with the purple. For me, I've got the army big red one, which is the blackout uniform for them. Just really clean. 
red accents with the gold numbers. Can't really go wrong with a blackout jersey. Yeah, and here I've got James Madison, uh, very similar to Washington University's uniforms that Brendan mentioned earlier. I guess what kind of attracts me to these is that they're FCS, so I'm kind of pulling these out over them. Gold helmets, purple tops, and they, they kind of they mix match. Sometimes I'll use black pants, sometimes I'll use white pants, but just the gold helmets with the purple tops look really good to me. For my number six, very slept on, is the Oregon Duck mascot-inspired uniform. They basically looked like their mascot with, like, the orange socks and the orange cleats. That's by far my favorite Oregon com it's, combination. A lot of Oregon people don't like it, but I think it's, like, insanely, insanely fire. With, I mean, with the orange face mask, like, the orange actions are just, just pop. Just that's so insanely. That's the only one that actually, like, stands out to me. They all stand out, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. Done. Well, to me, I, I, I've never really been a big fan of uniforms. All right, up next we're we're at five now. I got the the UCLA. Uh, they're called the LA Midnight uh, jerseys. It's just it's just black, but then they got like the the blue and gold numbers, and then the blue and gold on the helmet as well. Uh, I like I like those. I got them at number five. At my number five, I have a Florida's gray, like dark gray uniforms. I just find them with the orange numbers. The alligator uniforms, yeah, those are really sick. I won't say we're a fan of those. All right. Number five, same one Andrew did for number six, the navy with the anchor and the helmet. I, again, they're just simple. They're different, and I like them. So. For mine, I've got the Oklahoma State white helmet, orange jersey, white pants, with the cowboy on the helmet, just an overall clean jersey. Yeah, and I've got West Virginia. Definitely a set of uniforms that I, I feel don't get talked about enough. They've got a lot of really good combinations. My favorite is probably gray, gray top, gray pants, and then the navy blue helmet. But on top of that, the navy blue helmet with the yellow top and yellow pants also look really good to me. Number five, this is when we start getting really juicy in my list. We have the Florida Gators Swamp Green Gator print. This is when Dre Massey... Scored. Oh yeah, that's wait. That's what I just said. These? Yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. The you said that? All the alligator ones, yeah. I yeah. Was up. Okay, well. For real, I didn't even wasn't even listening. Um, but yeah, they're insanely fire. Just so good. All right, up at number four now. I've got the I've got some Oregon ones. I've got the Oregon all black with the neon green numbers. But the numbers are they're they're pretty large on here, so it's it doesn't look as all black as usual. But I just like the the way the helmet looks and the visor is pretty sick as well. So that's why I got them up at number four. At number four, I have the New Mexico State pink uniforms. I just <laughs> they I just like how they look. <laughs> Plus, but but what really what really gets me is look at their helmets. I like it. I like it. Terrible. TCU's all white with, and then they got the horns for the horn frogs represent. They got that coming out purple, and then of course their helmets with TCU and the horn frogs. I like those. Those are very different than any other team has. And then all white is just nice. For me at four, I've got navy, which which one? The navy blue, the blue top gold pants with the golden black helmet. Yeah, for I've got TCU, and I'm back with another all-black combination. And to me, this is by far the best all-black combination in the nation. It's TCU with the purple helmet and the black top and black bottom. And 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 the collar, he said it's the horn print. It almost kind of looks like a like a Black Panther, like the little necklace he has. I don't know what that's called. I'm not really a big Marvel guy. But the that little that little necklace that Black Panther wears, it looks a lot like that. that. So I, I really like it. My number four, I have like two, but they're kind of like grouped together. 
and it's the Oklahoma, like kind of like off white, like rough looking thing. You have you seen those jerseys? Oh, they yeah, got yeah. that one. Jordan one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they're called, but it's like an off white. And they have a home and away version with, like, the black accents on the cleats and socks. It just looks so good. All right. At my number three, I got the the Florida ones that Marcus and Kevin used, the alligator ones. They're, like, green, and they got, like, like it looks like an actual alligator skin, like, with all the, the scales on there. And then they got the, the blue undershirts and then the, the gray helmet. And then, yeah, so I got Florida at number four. At my, uh, yeah, number three. At my number three, I have the University of Hawaii's rainbow uniforms. They are insane. They're all white, and then they have rainbow on their on their sleeves. It's it's sick. <laughs> it's sick. And then the the visors on. It's actually insane. To what? Yeah, the Nuggets. But that's having them going over a mountain. So that actually like over a waterfall. A mountain and a waterfall. All right, three. I got like. I'm not. No, I'm not doing those. I still got North Carolina, but not those. I thought they were just the Warriors. All right, number three. I got North Carolina. They're they're black, and then they're baby they're baby blue numbers, and then baby 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 pants. <laughs> I like them. I usually don't like uniforms like these, but you don't see how it pulls them off. They were complimented. It was. On behalf of North Carolina, I'll take that call. And number three for me, I've got North Carolina's home, the white helmet, the baby blue jersey, and the white pants. And number three, I've got Arizona, the all red combination that they use. This is just so clean for me, this all red. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, absolutely sick. The navy one's nice too, but that all red with the blue trim just... The navy blue trim just absolutely pops to me. On my number three, we have the UCF. They've really been upgrading their uniforms um, lately. It's, they wore it this past year, 2019. It's like the space theme. They have like the like what, constellations in the numbers and like a spacey oh, looking yeah, helmet. Yeah, I saw those. Those are just like, those are elite. I forgot about those. Uh, I never even remember seeing them, but I looked them up and I was like, oh, those are juicy. Those are us uniform heads, will, will, you should be looking for for the North Carolina UCF game this year. That should be two crazy good in terms of uniforms. So we'll, we'll have two good teams, too, but two good uniforms. Hopefully. Hopefully. But just not the, not the same result, though. We'll take a North Carolina win. <laughs> All right, now now for, for number two, I got uh, Oregon State, the all-oranges with the, the brown helmets. Uh, that's black? Black helmet? No, yeah, that's, that's, that's black. All right, my bad. Black helmet. Marcos, number two, please. <laughs> I actually have I actually have Maryland's on there. No. The the red with the the red. Yeah. No, those are actually insane. I do like how the they have their yeah the flag. I like how they have the idea of the flag, but the flag is. Imagine if imagine if like. Dude, like only only if you and like only if you and C lived in South Carolina. Imagine a South Carolina themed uniform. Yeah, that would be insane. That would be insane. North South Carolina. <laughs> How good do you think that would be if you actually had like the best players? <laughs> it would mostly. Yeah, mostly. It'd be all of your players and then the girls' basketball team from South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a decent one. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. But, it's not but North compared North to North South Carolina, Carolina, it's, yeah. It's got a couple five stars. <laughs> all right, number two, I got Arizona State. They're all black uniforms with the yellow numbers, and then they got the yellow, the devil's pitchfork on their home. It's really good. It's the best blackout, in my opinion. And number two, I've got the same as Andrew. The Oregon State all orange with the black helmet. <laughs> <laughs> At two, I've got North Carolina. It's the same one Brendan went with, just a clean Carolina blue helmet, Carolina blue top, and then the white white pants with the Carolina blue trim. Just classic. The, in my opinion, the best classic-looking uniforms in the country. Just it, It's just so clean, so clean. All right. For my number two, I had a hard time between – Choosing between my number one and number two, but my number two is Navy. Back when they played Army in 2015, those games just bring out the best in uniforms. With the soldiers? Uh, no, this one was when they did the, the hand-painted each helmet of oh, the yeah. battleship. Wait, ben, ben said that too. Oh, those no, he had a different yeah, yeah. one. I was thinking about you. I didn't like the color of the helmet. That's the only thing. The color no, the these are the best the ones. The oh, best yeah. uniforms I've ever seen in my yeah, life, probably. It's like. Helmet. That's Man, what I was. That's the reason I didn't end up picking it because the rest of the uniform wasn't that good to me. But those helmets were just Player. so good. That's why I wanted they, to use like, it the because the last it, name was like someone who had died. Like, that's just so I know it's just uh, those uniforms were incredible. I, I, but like like Landon said, the reason I didn't end up picking it was just the the rest of the uniform didn't go good with the helmets, in my opinion. All right, now we're <coughs> the number one, who we think is the best uniform in college football. I got TCU, but not the TCU ones that you guys said. I got. They got the gray with the red numbers with the purple outline and then the purple helmet. They wore those against Texas last year as alternates. I, I like those. You see, I'll rotate around. Oh, I didn't like the number. I didn't like the number. You don't like the number? No. That's just not I got TCU. It's just yeah, it's not TCU. That's it's just not their, not if their colors. If they had red? Yeah. Well, I know it's not them, but I, I just it's like the way. I like the way it's like you got to represent. Cool. At my number one, I had the University of Maryland once again. With their with their red ops. Look at these. It's actually insane. I mean, red all around. It's like an all red out. It's pretty sick. Their they change everything about their entire uniform, and I would use this. No, their other uniforms are sick too. Back to back, Maryland's are some of the best uniforms ever. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I don't like. It. For me, I got another. It's an all red, but it's the all red for Texas Tech when they got all red and then the black the, for the Texas Tech. It's a diff. I, I like the way they're able to pull them off. It's different. So, I'm between two of TCU's jerseys here. That are the one that has the black helmet with the purple out.
Under Arm uniforms in general, like their jerseys just fit so terribly. Unless you have like the right body type and right shoulder pads, they just fit terribly. But my number one, um, really unexpected to be honest, I'm just playing. Number one, UNC, any of UNC's uniforms. Any of them, I promise you. I mean, in combination with the, they have a light blue face mask, a white helmet, a blue helmet, white jersey, blue bottoms, white helmet, orange top. I mean, not orange, what am I saying? Blue. Blue tops, white pants, like all the all black they wore a couple years ago when Ryan Switzer was there. Ryan Switzer just carries the they uniforms. Go. Ryan I mean, Switzer makes all the uniforms. I, he just looks ma- I Oh, him. gosh. You, you, you UNC know. uniforms are just un- undefeated. Than he did. You can see him in the polo, though. Okay, whatever. Come on. <laughs> all right, so that's our top ten college uniforms. Next week, there will be nine weeks left in col- college football, so we'll do the nine best coaches in college football. We talked a little bit about that. That's not college football, so. We'll do that. We'll do that later. Do what? Maryland. (laughs) Maryland, Hawaii. (laughs) Wait, no. Actually, I'll put Hawaii worst. Yeah, I would put Hawaii worst up there too. And then, and then. Andrew would put Duke as the worst. Oh, wait. Duke, NC State, Hawaii, then Maryland. Duke has good uniforms. Yeah, they do have pretty good. They're not terrible. They're not really good. The dark blue ones are the dark blue ones are definitely ugly. I like the dark blue. All right. Now, we'll we'll try to go quickly here with soccer. We'll just do, what, two games? We'll, we'll start with the Manchester City versus what, the Manchester City and Arsenal. All right. So, First, we start off with the Manchester United, Manchester City versus Arsenal, which was on Wednesday. <coughs> uh, I got, I got quite a lot of points that revolve around David Luiz, who Let me, before is absolutely we, before terrible. We really start this. I, I, we're obviously only talking about the two big games, but we do have to touch on one thing with the Sheffield uh, Villa game. Oh, the goal line technology yeah, that is just such a terrible robbed. blunder, costing robbed. Sheffield two points. You and they, they would have been, in, they would have been the fifth. Yeah, had they you, won that like, game. That's just such a bad mistake that it, it makes the Premier League look really bad with mistakes like that. Yeah, but Dean Henderson, the other, uh, he he played really well that game. He did. He did. And we should a, just we should honestly, just end <laughs> Dean Henderson's loan. Send out the hay. That's what I was about to say. Send out the hay on just, loan. Just to like Sheffield. contact Sheffield. Be like, hey, you guys can have the hay if we can have Dean back. Yeah. Facts. <clears throat> but then we got Romero too. Right? Yeah. True. Romero is pretty good. He's, I think, he, in my opinion, he's the best backup goalkeeper in the world. Fair enough. Yes. Based on his clean sheet record, he keeps a clean sheet basically every time he ever plays. I, I mean, I yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I can't think of a better one than you. All right, now back over Step to Man City Adrian. Arsenal. Uh, no, Lacazette, Pepe, and Martinelli all started on the bench for Arsenal. On the s- Ozil's not good. Ozil, so. yeah, Ozil wasn't. He's he's way bench. past it. Uh, seventh minute, Grant Zaka stretchered off. Danny Ceballos came on. 23rd minute, the big one, David Luiz comes on <laughs> for the another oh. injury, Pablo Mari. And then I've got a, one uh, point I put in between that is uh, if Arsenal are this bad with Burn Leno, for their sake, I'd hate to see how bad they are without Burn Leno because okay. he, was, he was definitely their best player by far. Look, I hate Arsenal anyway, so I'm glad David Luiz is so bad, but I've got to just – how do you have a performance that bad? Come on as a sub – Okay. Can Raheem Sterling a free goal? And David and Luiz then, is defense. Then give away a penalty. And he then gets sent off on that same penalty. How can is it possible to have a worse performance? That is a zero out of ten. We have to remember where he played. Chelsea. You know that Chelsea. That's the only, they're thinking, that is the only way you can thinking, say he had a good they're performance. Plotting, is, they're is plotting. It, he they're has like, got to be getting paid by Chelsea to be this bad. They're pl- they're plotting. They're saying send David Luiz and then Destroy Arsenal. You know, I remember where there was a point over the summer where you told me David Luiz was one of the best signings, and I told you. I, I wish I sc- – I don't know if we talked about it over text or out loud, but but David Luiz, I told you he was going to be their downfall, and he is. That's why they're in ninth place. David Luiz is terrible. He don't, made Mustafi look good. Yeah. We're Mustafi. not talking about how bad Shock the Crown or whatever, whatever his name is, Mustafi, because he's not very good either, but he looked pretty good Arsenal because David Luiz was so bad. Arsenal are terrible. They're in full reboot. No, I mean, <laughs> Arsenal. <sighs> they've got they've got some they've got some really good players. I mean, Aubameyang, Martinelli, Aubameyang, Martinelli yeah. 
They've got some really solid players. And they I start think Pepe, a lot of young players, I think Pepe, too. He, he's, he's definitely improving. He is overrated, but he's, he's improving from the start of the year. Arsenal could be really good if they if they could just figure. First of all, get David Luiz out. Or just, Second of all, just buy figure a out whole a system. new back four. Yeah, just or, or just figure out a system where they can make this work. But yeah, they definitely they need to put some mo- they need to put some money into the into yeah, the defense. But, but for this as summer. bad for as bad as Arsenal played, Man City they they did their thing. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Who who scored? I know Kevin De Bruyne Raheem scored. Sterling. Raheem Sterling scored and Phil Foden yeah. in the ninety first minute. Uh, so Arsenal stay in ninth. Although they're only four, Burn, they're four points off sixth place like for the. Like you said, Burn Europa Little League. had an incredible game. I mean, made Especially some great the saves. Half. There's nothing he could have done with the three goals. I mean, the penalty and then the, nothing he can really do with the Reese Sterling like, or the away, Phil, yeah. Fo- Phil Foden goal, goal was a tapping off a rebound. So yeah. nothing he could really do. He had a great game. Yeah, uh, my man of the match, Kevin De Bruyne. Anyone else want to argue that? I don't think so. Kevin De Bruyne. No. Uh, yeah, KDB. I'm not. No. Mm. You could you could argue that, but. I don't think you can give the player of the year to a, no. a player who doesn't win the league. It, it's it's going to go to somebody from Liverpool. Uh, as long as it's not Jordan Henderson, I'll be all right. What? I think we're talking about the – we're talking – shut up. All right. <clears throat> next next game. Uh, also, last game before we move on to predictions for the coming week. Just happened. Uh, Manchester United versus Tottenham. Uh, first 15 minutes, both teams were, were tense. There was quite a lot of fouls. Which I was not happy with. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, I'm a Man United fan, so <laughs> a lot of bias. I'll be a little bit biased. <clears throat> uh, 22nd minute, uh, a good spell for United and, uh, as Rashford and Fred forced Lloris. The, the the save for Lloris off of Rashford's shot was a really good save with his feet, but then uh, Fred shot it right down his throat, so that was also a good save. But then in the 27th minute, Steven Bergvine uh, just sprinted past Harry Maguire, shot it right. At David De Gea, who led into the goal, and I was furious with that, uh, which is not—it's it, not surprising consider how David De Gea has been playing this year. But then, 32nd minute, David De Gea definitely made up for it. I made a really good save off of Son's header, and then that's that's all for the first half. But uh, moment of the game for me, 63rd minute should have happened in the 45th minute. Paul Pogba comes on making his re-debut after he's been out for a long time with injury. Mason Greenwood also came on. Uh, and the 65th minute, right off the bat, Paul Pogba makes a big impact, uh, makes a pass into Bruno. Bruno makes a great turn and passes it to Martial. Martial probably should have scored, but it was a good good uh, block by... Was, was it Dyer? I think it was Dyer. Um, 66 minute... Uh, Lloris made the, a really good save again off of... I thought it was Martial that time. I, I should have I should said that. I don't remember. Uh, 80th minute, uh, Paul Pogba won the penalty off some terrible defending from Eric Dyer, but even better footwork from Paul Pogba. In 82nd minute, uh, after some long distractions from uh, Tottenham, Bruno converted the penalty off the hop step. 90th minute, John Moss, the referee, gave another penalty, but rightly uh, VAR ruled it out. That's what it's there for, to take out the bad decisions. And it ended 1-1. Man United stay in fifth place. Uh, Tottenham stay in seventh, I believe. Uh, my man of the match, Paul Pogba, came yeah. off the bench and was very good. Showed uh, why he is one of the best players in the Premier League. Uh, just crazy talented. Had some really good passes, really good footwork. Other than that, there, there, mean, he didn't do anything bad, really. If you're going to give a man to the match to somebody from Tottenham, it's Serge Aurier. He, he definitely saved the goal. I forgot who took the shot. No, it was Sanchez. Please, please tell, keep what? saying this. No, no, no. Sanchez. Serge Aurier saved something. He had a block somewhere there. But not, not, the, not the better one. The better one was Sanchez. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But either way, I, so I Serge put, Aurier had a great Bergvine, game. He, Bergvine ahead because it wasn't just the goal, but he was he was running Luke Shaw ragged in the first thirty minutes. Yeah. But then Luke Shaw bounced back pretty well and he, shut him down in the second half, forced him to get nah, subbed off. I, I only saw the second half, so but in the second half, the man in the match from Tottenham for me was Serge Aurier. He looked great on both ends, but definitely Paul Pogba. First I mean, he game, just came first on. game by the way that Bruno has not been the man of the match. I, I, I that mean, should say something he, about he, how good he is. He just came on. I mean, it was really Tottenham's game. Tottenham was dominating the game until. Until Pog Pogba came on and they were well, he just he just completely flipped it. it, it dominating I mean, in a sense because Man United still had sixty five yeah, percent I mean, of possession, but but Tottenham they, had the good chances. Yeah, and, yeah and that's they what I was gonna say. The one and finished a you at, like a half chance. But. You, you, 
I mean, like that first, what was it, two, three minutes that Paul Pava came on, I mean, San, or Manchester United just completely had the ball in the in the final third, just putting in shot after shot and good defense and a few good saves from Hugo Lloris. Yeah. Hugo Lloris kept that draw alive. He made some incredible yeah. saves. I mean, obviously couldn't save the penalty. <laughs> but Eric no, no, Dier, not much you about that him. was so terrible. Yeah. It was a great dribble from Paul Pogba to get past him, but you you can't bring he him down a, in that area. It's it's a tough. He's got just got to throw up a ball to the far yeah. post and hope somebody's there to get it in. And it, you, you just got to let him send that ball, and you can't bring him down right there. <clears throat> yep. So that's that's all we got here for what's happened this week. But we'll just do some score predictions. Uh, more games tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. And we'll go through Tuesday, which will end the the, f- the first round of the Premier League. So we'll we'll just do Brendan. Do you want to you want to predict too or y'all? No, we're, we're good. y'all two share that mic and we'll share this mic. Uh, first game, yeah, first game tomorrow, 7 a.m. Watford versus Leicester. I got Leicester with a 2-0 win. Versus who? Oh, four 0 Four 0 for who? Um, I'm actually gonna go w- with a one-one draw. Watford was looking a lot better before going into the uh, before going into what? the restart, and Leicester was <laughs> kind of starting to lose form. So, what? I think it's gonna be a close game. Even if, it, it, I don't think Watford's got a chance. No, Charlie's on Wolves. I, Watford's I, I don't think about to be relegated. They, uh, no, they're definitely not getting relegated. But I'm I, sure it's going to be a close game. I don't think Watford's got the firepower to win it, but I think they can definitely enforce a draw. I think that Jamie Vardy's going to be really motivated. He's trying to get the top scorer in the Premier League. He's really close. So Watford is the worst team I've ever seen play this year. Aside from... I, I don't care. Southampton... I wonder... Here, give me a sec. Give me a sec. When did what was the score when Walford and Southampton played? At next game. Um, uh, we got Brighton versus Ars- Brighton versus Arsenal also on Saturday. I got a two-two draw right there. Brighton Arsenal. Yep. <laughs> I don't think Arsenal can beat anybody right now, especially with injuries and suspensions. But that kind of makes it better. And having David Luiz. That kind of makes it better. Yeah, nope. I was about to say they've got have David, no David Luiz. Socrates is David? also injured. Uh, Pablo Mari and uh, Jaka might also be injured. I've got, we'll I've see. got, I've got a. I think it's going to be really close. I think, uh, I think somebody from Arsenal is going to step up and find a late goal. I think I got Arsenal one now. I did too, two one. I mean, I've got Ar- Arsenal winning, but not by much. I feel like it's going to be like close one one game. I feel like it's going to be a Deciding goal at the very end. All right. Uh, next up, West Ham and Wolves. I got Wolves uh, one nil. I think it'll be a counter attack goal. I think Wolves will sit back, allow West Ham on them, and then hit them on the counter attack one nil. I'm predicting Wolves come out with a bang here, seven nil. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. It's the, you act like West Ham's like bad, but they're not a bad they're, team. Uh, they're bad, but not not that, that bad. bad. Uh, what's what's Wolves' striker name? I his name Raul just, Jimenez. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got Wolves till no two nil with goals from Traore and Raul Jimenez. I've got Traore scoring on a counter attack. Just his, I mean, I mean he's just got so much speed and strength. He's just yeah and strength. He's just so much big. I mean, he can take a shot from basically anywhere, with just like the p- with the power that he has. I feel like it's gonna be Wolves two nothing. All right, now we got Bournemouth Crystal Palace. I got a one one tie. Pretty boring game, I'd say. I that's just that's just too that's really a medi- just a mediocre game. I mean, yeah, it, it's two mediocre teams. They're not terrible teams, but they're just you know not what? good. Crystal Palace is gonna win this four nil. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree with Andrew and Ben here. Just one, one draw. Neither team's really great. Other than Wilfred, Wilfred Zaha, there's yeah. absolutely nothing that stands out. And Nathan Aki. Nathan Aki. Four two. All right. Uh, next up, Newcastle and Sheffield United. I got, I got three one. Sheffield United take the win. 
I've got I've got two nil Sheffield United. I think Dean, Dean Henderson is going to keep a clean sheet. Two nil Sheffield. I got one nil Sheffield. I have got to keep it close here. Three nil Sheffield. All right. Uh, now we're over the Sunday, I believe. Uh, Ch- Chelsea versus Aston Villa. I got four nil Chelsea. Ashton Villa. Ashton. Ashton Villa. Aston Villa is going to come up with the upset here. Okay. Two nil. It depends on who's in goal. <laughs> if if Kepa's in goal, twenty nil. <laughs> no, no Kepa two own goals. That's how it's gonna be two nil. Yeah, no, I've got I, I I've got three one Chelsea. I've got two nil Chelsea. Okay. Uh, the big one, the big one for the weekend, uh, Everton versus Liverpool, the Merseyside derby. Uh, Marcos, I guess, versus versus Ben. Been the Liverpool fan. We're gonna Marcos, have a little mini debate Everton, here. This Everton-ish is be fan. Uh, well, me and Brendan will go first. I got three 0 Liverpool. Brendan, what do you got? I got a four one Liverpool. Four one Liverpool. All right, Ben and Marcos argue. All right. First of all, Richarlison made the absolute worst mistake he possibly could have made by talking trash about Virgil Van Dijk. Virgil Van Dijk is gonna be fired up. This whole Liverpool team is gonna be fired up. Well, I. I if Virgil does anything I would do in the first five minutes, Richarlison is just getting absolutely laid out by Virgil. I, get respect for Virgil. I mean, Virgil's fired up. This whole Liverpool team is going to be fired up. I, I've got goals fr- from the front from uh, Salah and, uh, and Mane, both assisted by Firmino. I've got probably going to end up in like a f- – I'm, I'm going to go – I'm going to go f- – you know what? I'm he wants gonna, to say four. He wants to say four. I, I, I'm going to go just match the reverse fixture. I'm going to go 5-1 Liverpool. What? Okay. The only reason I think that Everton's going to win this game is because... You think they're going to win this game? Oh, I know they're going to win this game. Explain. Everton Look, is terrible. Everton and Liverpool, Everton one is of the most heated rivalries Everton, in the Premier League. Everton is the definition of and Liverpool. I'm, I promise you this. Everton's not going to let Liverpool win the Premier League because of them. They can't, they can't. No, Liverpool literally cannot lose the Premier League. Oh, where there's a will, there's a way, baby. There's no way. You're s- Where there's a will, Liverpool. there's a way. Okay. Oh, have you already, has has Ex- Liverpool already clinched? Has Who Liverpool already clinched? Who has is Liverpool going to score? Who is going to score for Everton? Who is going to score for Everton? Wait, what's what's your score prediction? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I I mean it's between five and six, but. Who is going? Who can possibly score for Everton? I think Jordan Pickford's going to score a penalty. In the 87th minute. Who's going to give away a penalty? Who's even going to get the Virgil ball? Virgil Van Dijk is going to give away a penalty. Get, get the ball into Liverpool's box. Are you kidding me? Bro, Marcos, the only way... Yerry Mina is going to score a header. Marcos. In the, the, and he, the Colombian is going to dance, and it's going to be legendary. 1-0. This will only be close if Pickford has the game of his life. going to absolutely do the Fortnite L dance on your head. All right, one more game, guys. We have one more game. We'll spare Marcos. Uh... Man City versus Burnley, 2 0 Man City. All right, Marcos doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Man City win. All right, that's yeah, going to do it. Won. Man City, 7 0. 7. Interesting. Oh, okay. Interesting. That's some, that's some Marcos prediction right there. That's going to do it here, week five. Uh, next week, we'll have Malden versus uh, Carolina Academy, another terrible team. Um, no offense. Thanks for playing us. Um, I haven't said, I think we got NBA trivia. We'll have more Premier League, and then we got more college football. Nope. Um, that's gonna do it here for us. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at mhbn2020 and on Instagram mhbn underscore 2020, and make sure to buy our merch. Sunday is the last day. Uh, DM us if you're interested, and we will see you next week.